Okay, lesson 3.3. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about graphing systems of linear inequalities. So, so far in this chapter, we've been talking about systems, solving systems of uh, linear equations, uh, using graphing method, using uh, elimination substitution method. Now we're talking about graphing systems of inequalities, uh, talking about graphing two or more inequalities on the same uh, graph. And we're looking for that overlapping region, that overlapping set of points that makes all the inequalities in the system uh, true. So one a quick refresher here is that remember when we have greater than or less than but not equal to, it's going to be a dashed or a dotted line. And then what we can do is we can either use that test point method or the other method where you get the y value by itself. If y is greater, we're shading above. If y is less, then we're shading below. But again, you can use a test point method to see if you're shading the correct side of the plane. But remember, if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that means we're dealing with like a solid line, meaning it includes the points on the line, and then you're, you can test to see which side of that uh, line you should shade. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the overlapping region, and I'll just give you a little bit of a hint. Like, say for example, I had like a, an inequality like this and I was shading above this inequality. Well, I could draw lines that are just like vertical, but a lot of times what I like to do is draw lines that are perpendicular to the, to the line. So that if I had, say for example, another line, and say I was shading above this line greater than, uh, again, I would draw lines that are perpendicular and see what happens is you can see that cross-hatched region. So I then can go back and then I can you know, darken that further and that's the solution set, meaning the set of all points in this region that are gonna make both inequalities true. So let's jump into some Want to learn Algebra 2? Check out my Learn Algebra 2 video course for sale where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 2. We go through the important formulas, concepts, as well as numerous examples to help you master Algebra 2. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. True. So let's jump into some examples, see if you can do these on your own. Pause the video, we've got four examples. This last one, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna write the inequalities uh, that satisfy this uh, the solution set of points right here. We wanna find that uh, the three inequalities that are gonna make this uh, region here our solution set. So for number one, see if you can do this one. We've got y is less than or equal to 2x minus one, and 3x plus 2y is greater than 12. So how would you do that one? Well, the first one you can see is in our slope-intercept form, our y equals mx plus b form. Our y-intercept is negative one, so it's gonna cross right here at negative one. The slope is two, which is like two over one, so I'm gonna go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Okay, you can also go down to left one, down to left one. It's less than or equal to, which means that it's gonna be equal to, means it's gonna include the points on the line, in case it's a solid line, not a dashed or dotted. And then because the y is by itself, remember the y controls the vertical direction, the up and the down, right? The vertical uh, direction, but y is less than or equal to. So less than means we're shading below down. But now what I was telling you about here is what I like to do, if I know I'm gonna be on this side of the line, I like to draw uh, lines that are perpendicular to that line, just so I can see it a little bit easier. Now over here for this one, the variables are on the left, numbers on the right. I'm gonna use the intercept method. If I set x to zero, divide by two, you can see the y-intercept is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I set y to zero and divide by three, I can see the x-intercept is four. This is greater than but not equal to, so I'm gonna make this a dashed or dotted line, like that, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a test point method. So if I pick the origin, zero, zero. If I put zero in for x and zero in for y, that's zero. Is zero greater than 12? No, so this point where the origin is not the true side of the plane, not the true side of the line. I wanna shade the other side, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw lines that are perpendicular to that, to that line. So now what you can see, they're overlapping right here in this region, right here. So we're above this line, we're below this line, and they're overlapping right here. So you can do that a little bit better. Some students like to use colored pencils. They like to shade like maybe, you know, uh, one color and then shade another color and then they can see where they overlap. That's a, a nice way to do it. Okay, number two, let's see if we can do this one. We've actually got three inequalities. Y is less than four, X is greater than or equal to negative two, and two X minus six Y is uh, less than six. Well, now remember Y lines, these are uh, horizontal lines. So we've got one, two, three, four. It's less than but not equal to four. Less than means we're shading below. 
I'll shade this in just a moment. Maybe what I'll do is I'll draw a little arrow just to tell me I'm shading down like that. X is greater than or equal to negative two. Okay, remember X lines are gonna be vertical lines, like that, and it's solid because it's equal to. Now, X controls left and right. If the X is greater than, I'm gonna be shading to the right. If it's less than, I would be shading to the left. So, so far you can see we're below this line. We're to the right of this line. So we're gonna be in this region right here so far, this like quadrant. For the last inequality, I'm gonna do the intercept method. If I set X to zero and divide by negative six, you can see the Y intercept is negative one. If I set y to zero and divide by two, you can see the x-intercept is three, okay? And it's less than but not equal to, so this is gonna be a dashed or dotted line. Okay, I'm a little bit off on my line there. Okay, a little bit, should be straight. Okay, so look at what we've got here. This one is uh, in the standard form, so I pick a test point like the zero, zero, the origin. Zero minus zero is zero. Is zero less than six? Yes, so that means that I wanna shade on this side of the line. So you can see that we were below this horizontal line to the right of this vertical line and we're above this diagonal line right like this so you can see our solution set is going to be right in here that kind of triangular region now a lot of students will say you know mario isn't it always like the center region not necessarily you know sometimes it might be this region here or this region over here or this region so don't necessarily always think it's the one right in the center although a lot of times when they're giving you these example problems they do set it up in such a way that it is in the, the center but uh, don't automatically think that's you know, that's the correct answer. Now, number three, this one's an interesting one because we've got an absolute value. And we talked about how to graph absolute value graphs in an earlier lesson in this course. Uh, but we're doing this now as a system of inequality. So the first one, y is less than negative one half absolute value of x minus two plus three. How would you graph that? Well, you remember the number group of the x has the opposite effect. The minus two is actually gonna shift it right to, the plus three is gonna shift it up three that's gonna be our vertex right there. The negative one half is kinda of like the slope. The negative means it's gonna be a V-shaped graph opening down, and it's gonna be like a down one over two, down one over two, um, et cetera. And then same thing here, we can do the reflection uh, over this line of symmetry, down one over two, down one over two. It's less than but not equal to, so I'm gonna draw this as a dashed or a dotted line, however you wanna say that. And the y's are less than, meaning we're gonna shade you know, below, because y controls the, the vertical direction here, right? You can also do the test point method and you'll see that this is true. And then y is greater than or equal to negative one. Remember, y equals lines are horizontal lines. And uh, greater than means we're gonna be shading above. So when the y is by itself, above. So we're below this graph, above this, it looks like we're gonna be right here in this, again, this triangular region. That's the overlap. Okay, now the last one, example number four, here they give us the graph and we want to write the inequalities. Okay, so let's take this one at a time. So you can see this vertical line right here. We're shading to the left of this line, right? Well, remember vertical lines are X lines, right? So this is gonna be X is less than or equal to two, right? This horizontal line right here, okay, this one right here, is a Y line, okay? So that's gonna be Y is less than or equal to three, see, because it's below. And then this third line here, this one's a little bit more challenging because it's on a diagonal. What we could do is we could find the slope by doing the slope formula. Negative two minus three is negative five. X two minus X one is also gonna give us, let's see, two minus negative three is gonna give us positive five. So it has a slope of negative one. And the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. You can see it's crossing right at the origin there. So this is actually gonna be the line y equals negative one x plus zero. We could just think of this as y equals negative x. But notice we're shading above, you know, like above this line here, right? So this is gonna be greater than or equal to, so y is greater than or equal to x. And you've got your system that describes this set of points that makes all these inequalities true. So. We went through a few different examples here. You know, the absolute value graph was one that we talked about earlier. Some of these involve three inequalities, two inequalities. If you need to, go ahead and review this lesson. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.